Sabi nga nila, ang buhay ay parang isang paglalakbay. Iba't iba ang iyong daraanan, iba't iba ang karanasan. Pero iisa ang nangingibabaw at magkakapareho ang galing ng mga Pilipino. Ako po si Stefano de Medici, samahan niyo akong bumiyahe sa buong mundo. Kilalanin ang mga nagpabilib sa buong daigdig. Sila ang The Global Filipino. Kings, queens, princesses, presidents, prime ministers, celebrities. Name the big clients and definitely he has it. Sila ang karaniwang kliyente ng fashion designer na si Michael Cinco. Isa sa pinakamalaki sa Dubai at siguro sa buong mundo. Ang kanyang shop ang buong fifth floor sa Dubai Design District. Pinuntahan namin siya sa Dubai para alamin ang kwento ng kanyang tagumpay. Tell us about your childhood in the Philippines. Saan po kayo galing sa Pilipinas? I grew up in a small town in Katbalogan, Samar. Yung place ko, wala talaga masyadong fashion. It's a very small town na lahat ng tao halos magkakilakilala. When I was a kid, I remember I love uh, watching classic Hollywood films. Yung mga black and white. So doon talaga nag-ano yung passion ko for fashion. When you saw these Hollywood movies, pa- paano ka na, na interest in fashion? The first Hollywood film na napanood ko was My Fair Lady with Audrey Hepburn. She really influenced me a lot in fashion. Kasi doon sa summer, I thought ang pinapanood ko palagi mga black and white. Yung pala yung TV namin is black and white pala talaga siya. <laughs> Yung time na yun talagang gusto ko na maging fashion designer kasi na-inspired talaga ako sa mga costumes tapos sa mga damit na sinusuot ng mga Hollywood heroines. So nung time na yun, saan ka nagpa-practice to, to kind of start your designing phase? Mahilig ako magsulat at mag-drawing sa school and I always excel in arts. So doon nakasa yung ano ko talaga as a fashion designer kasi palagi na ako nagdi-design kahit bata pa ako. Were your parents very supportive back then or they're your mother? Uh, yeah, they're very supportive. Actually, yung mother ko pati yung mga sister ko ginagawa ko sila ng mga designs para sa damit. And then fast forward, did you study fashion back in college or paano ka naging professionally into I fashion? I was a state business? scholar in one of the prestigious uh, universities. And uh, huminto ako kasi parang I'm not happy. So I pursued a fashion design in uh, Slim's Fashion School. And then after that, nag-work ako sa mga fashion designers sa Manila. It was the early 90s and fashion in Manila was growing. People really spend so much money to go to parties and they spend a lot of money to make clothes with designers. So yung time na yun, doon ako na-inspired na parang gusto ko na talaga mag-fashion designer. Dream ko talaga ang mga hood couture dresses kasi yung mga movie na pinapanood ko, ang mga damit nila is something like grand and very, same like, you know, they're, they're attending a ball. So yun talagang aesthetic ko, yun ang dream ko na gawin. So my friend told me na pag pumunta ka daw ng Middle East, ganun ang mga damit na ginagawa dito. So I was convinced to work abroad. Then yung unang time na pumunta ko dito, I was a little bit parang na culture shock. Kasi hindi ito mga damit na ginagawa ko sa Pilipinas. But because my eyes were trained with hood couture, so parang nakuha ko agad siya. They like a lot of beadworks and very opulent dresses. You know, yung mga lines na ginagawa sa atin, hindi masyadong detailed. Not like here, na ang lalaki ng mga damit, at saka grabe ang mga beadworks. Mm-hmm. 
did you have to adjust your design style to fit the market here? I had to adjust, but at the same time, my eyes were already trained from the movies that I was watching. So, parang sisu na lang siya sa akin. Nakuha ko kaagad ang taste nila. Ano yung sort of environment as a, a growing designer back here in Dubai? What was the fashion scene like? Uh, economy was in boom. So there are a lot of women who really spend so much money to a certain couture dress. So lahat sila nagpapagawa ng damit. Talagang pabunggahan sila ng mga damit doon. Which is a good advantage on my side because I really love doing this kind of dresses. When it comes to haute couture, the name Michael Cinco is top of mind, not only in the Middle East, but in other parts of the world as well. Kilala siya sa detalye ng kanyang mga disenyo at ganda ng kanyang mga gawa. Bukod sa Filipino team of designers, kasama din sa kanyang team ang mga Indians at Pakistanis na expertise ang embroidery. Pero ang tagumpay ni Michael, nagkaroon din ng mga pagsubok. What was it like? Meron ka bang mga struggles when you first came here? Well, working in the Middle East is actually very hard. First, you have to face racial discrimination. Some clients, they keep on asking kung anong nationality ng designer. And they are not yet sure about your capability of doing something like a very couture piece for them. So, parang wala pa silang tiwala. What made you stay here back then when you had challenges such as those? It, it's all about the money. <laughs> the money is here in Dubai. Yeah. Yung mga kinikita ko dito sa Dubai, napapadala ko sa parents ko at saka nasuportahan ko ang family ko. Ano po yung, yung story? how you started your own brand. You know, when you work here, you always have a three-year contract. So at that time, when I finished my contract, I decided to go to London to study, and I went also to Paris. Pagbalik ko parabang sabi ko, I'm ready to have my own brand. So 2003, I put up my Michael Sinko brand. I had a business partner, isang local. So doon na nagsimula. So when I studied in London, I'm pinag-aralan ko doon yung mga techniques about fashion, and of course Paris is the center of couture. So doon pinag-aralan ko ang mga damit, ang mga magagandang paggawa at saka style at saka yung mga technique nila pa paano gumawa ng couture na mga damit. So when I came to Dubai at that time, uh, parang binago ko ang taste ng mga Arabiana. I just have to encourage them na they have to change their style kasi dati yung style ng mga Arabo is masyadong opulent, masyadong heavy ang beadworks, at saka grabe ang mga details ng mga damit nila. So, I advise them to tone it down. Here in the Middle East, meron silang ano mentality na pag sinabing Paris or Milan or London or from New York, hangang-hanga sila doon. Why such a very like high fashion? Well, uh, that's where the money is. You know, when you make a pretty party, wala masyadong pera. Kasi you have to make volume in pretty party, same like kung maginagawa sa Pilipinas. Kung gusto mong kumita, kailangan gumawa ka ng maraming damit. But in hood couture, each piece is different and each dress is very expensive because it takes a lot of hours and takes a lot of effort and love just to create a dress. So when you're making, for example, a dress for a client, where do you find your design inspiration from? No, it depends. I have to know their personality and the character. Ngayon, most of the women are very educated. They're very well-traveled, so they know everything about fashion. So I just go with the flow. I just tell them that this is the best design for you, if you like it. Sometimes they agree. Sometimes may mga inputs pa rin silang inaano. Have you encountered a client that said, you know, make me this type of dress, but then you made it, 
to what she wanted, but then she changed her mind. Yeah, How do you deal times, with that? Ang mga Arabiana, they're very demanding. May mga nangyayaring ganon na ginawa na tapos pinapabago. I always try to convince them na hindi na pwedeng ganon. Na kailangan you have to accept this design kasi yun ang bagay sa'yo. So, kailangan magaling ka rin mag-convince ng client dito. How often do you go to Paris or, you know, the fashion capitals of the world to get inspiration? I travel a lot and I used to go to fashion weeks in Paris, in New York, in Milan. Doon ako kumukuha ng mga inspiration and when I come back, I always tell them that this is the fashion, but actually, most of the women here, they don't follow trends. They ask, what's the nationality of the designer? And I always tell them, it doesn't matter kung anong nationality ng designer, as long as na magandang damit mo. I convince them, ngayon nagtatanong na sila kung Filipino ba ang designer? Kasi kailangan Filipino ang designer para maging maganda yung damit nila. Sa kabila ng tinatamasang tagumpay, na natiling grounded si Michael Cinco. Kahit pa marami na siyang kliyente mula sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo, hindi na wala ang pagiging humble ni Michael. So Michael, with the humbleness aside, how big is the brand Michael Cinco now? Talagang, <laughs> with the humbleness aside. <laughs> no, uh, I think the brand is still very small. In You know, when you compare it to other uh, designers abroad, but I got so many clients from all over the world. Usually, I got so many clients from Russia. I have many clients also from Latin America and also from China. So I don't know if it's already big or if you consider it as a big brand or, but I am being recognized. How do they know about your name? Recommendation, and sometimes it's also from the internet. Two years ago, I did the wedding of the daughter of the Prime Minister of Malaysia, and also the daughter of the President of Kazakhstan. They've seen my design through the internet. I did uh, also the wedding dresses and a collection of beautiful evening gowns for the family of uh, the President of Russia. Putin. So, sabi mo, very small lang yung brand. <laughs> well, uh, what about celebrities naman? Kasi, of course, alam mo mga tao, gusto nila malaman, sino mga Hollywood celebrities or world celebrities that you've dressed? Actually, dressing up celebrities helps the to make the brand more famous and more clients because the most important is when you dress up celebrities, it translates to business. It all started with Sofia Vergara. When she walked in Golden Globe on the red carpet, she was the first one to And then, next to the yun, I dressed up also Lady Gaga, Beyonce, and then Jennifer Lopez, Rihanna. Sunod sunod na sila. And I did also the costumes of Mila Kunis in the uh, Hollywood film uh, Jupiter Ascending. That's very impressive. Everyone, of course, wants to find out. How expensive is a Michael Cinco dress? The most expensive dress that you've made for someone. <laughs> Ang masabi ko lang is okay na siya pang sahod sa mga taong hangin. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. So, well, now that you are known globally, how do you feel about? I'm not just known globally. <laughs> yeah, with clients all over the world. There are clients all over the world, and may mga Pilipino lang na nakakakilala yun lang. <laughs> so, how do you feel about, of course, the fame that you have now? When I walk to the mall here in Dubai, may mga nagpapakuha na ng picture sa akin. So, sabi ko, ganun na ba talaga ka ano? Kasi dito sa Dubai walang celebrities. So, para sa kanila, mga celebrities yung mga designers sa gold. So, pag nakikita nila ako, especially yung mga, uh, mga local women, yeah, pag nakikita nila ako, nagpapakuha sila sa akin ng, ng picture. So, ang kailangan lang, ang fame, hindi mo ilagay sa ulo mo. You must always uh, remain humble. That's the most important thing, yeah. So, when was the first moment that I realized, mo, wow, people actually know who I am? I saw one lady and then somebody told me that, I love that dress, it's very Michael Cinco. That's the moment that I realized, oh, that's na pala. <laughs> <laughs> How hands-on are you with the dressmaking process? You know, the beadwork, all the swarovski. I'm very uh, meticulous. 
ako talaga ang nagche-check sa lahat like from the pattern making pati paggawa ng artwork pati sa mga beadwork ng sample ako talaga ang umuupo at saka akong gumagawa What factor do you think is keeping your brand as it is right now? Actually, hindi ko alam. I think I just have to go with the flow. <laughs> Kung may isang bagay na proud si Michael Cinco sa kanyang mga naabot, ito ang nagagawa niyang pagtulong sa mga kapwa Pilipino sa Dubai. Sa trabahong na ibibigay niya, natatranslate ito sa tulong din sa mga pamilya sa Pilipinas ng kanyang Filipino staff. So how big is your team here working? Do you have a lot of Filipino staff with you? Uh, yes, most of my staff are Filipinas and they're very good at it. Do you love it here? Well, I'm very thankful in Dubai because I was given the opportunity and I had a lot of good uh, things that happened here. And I love uh, living here because of the, the ruler here, you know, they always aim the biggest, the tallest, and the grandest, so it gives you motivation. Na kailangan maging ano karen, maging kalevel mo rin ang mga nangyayari dito sa Dubai. How often do you go back to Philippines? Most of the time, pag may mga clients sa kuno mga Filipino, umuwi ako and pag may mga events yung family namin. And then in the future, san mo gusto magstay or magretire dito sa Dubai or back in the Philippines? I want to retire in the south of France in the French Riviera. Of Yun course, ang dream ko. <laughs> That's good. Of course, it's a very yeah. nice place. Ano naman yung reaction ng family mo with all the success that you've had? Actually, ang family ko they're just very humble and simple people. So, ang reaction lang nila is. Uh, nangihingi na sila ng mas malaking allowance. <laughs> <laughs> Yung love. Which you can give them now, of course. <laughs> there are other successful Pinoys try to give back to the Philippines. How do you plan on kind of helping or giving support to other, let's say, aspiring designers in the Philippines? Well, actually, palagi akong nag-show nag sa Pilipinas. We have so many Filipino the talented Filipino designers, which is at par with other uh, international designers. So, ang ginagawa ko is palagi akong sumasali ng mga fashion, uh, fashion week sa Pinas. So, how do you help other Filipinos back in the Philippines, especially aspiring designers, kind of grow and be like you in the future? I, I can't say na natutulungan ko sila because hindi pa nangyari, but I try to inspire Filipino designers, especially the young ones, that they can achieve whatever they want to uh, do in life if they just uh, keep on dreaming and if they have strong uh, faith and determination. So Michael, tell us what is that one trait that made you a global Filipino? I always envision myself to achieve most of my impalpable dreams. And that's very important. And you have to be always impalpable. Hey guys, Marnie Manika here, director of Team NMPI. Thanks for watching our shows. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos. Stay tuned!